I want to move on to um, another thing that people think a lot about, which is uh, upcoming therapeutics. Uh, so we've got two drugs that seem to, in randomized trials, be helpful, right? Remdesivir and dexamethasone. And there has been, as you know, a lot of enthusiasm and, and a lot of kind of fingers crossed for antibodies, monoclonal, polyclonal antibodies. Um, where are we on the science on that? Yeah. And then is there an effort to ramp up production kind of, again, at risk, uh, financial risk to the government or whoever to make sure that there's plenty of supply? So if the clinical trials turn positive, uh, we can give it to lots of people. Can yeah. you just give us a bit of a status update on therapeutics? On yeah. that? Well, there are at least three companies that are now investing and maybe four. In, in fact, quite frankly, there's maybe more that I don't even know about. But there are three or four that we're dealing with who are going the monoclonal antibody route, namely an antibody natural product, you build it up, you passively infuse it. They are directed either singly or in combination against the major part of the spike protein, which binds to the ACE2 receptor. A few days ago, we announced two trials. In fact, there were three trials. One, the company's doing independently of prophylaxis, and two that are a therapy. And it relates to what you said about dexamethasone and remdesivir. That's for late disease. Dexamethasone, ventilators, oxygen, remdesivir, oxygen in the hospital. The two monoclonal antibody trials, one is an outpatient trial of an individuals who are clearly infected but don't require hospitalization. The other is those that are hospitalized but are not in intensive care requiring ventilation. That's good news, Ashish, because we had a real need for what we do early to prevent people from advancing to the need for hospitalization, or if they're in hospitalization, for having to go to intensive care. Those trials started, the companies are telling us that they are in fact proceeding at risk. Some of them are even being subsidized by the federal government to mitigate their risk to proceed to make the product. Then there are other things that we're doing, like convalescent plasma, we're still analyzing the data to see if in fact that works and we're gonna hopefully complement that with data from randomized placebo controlled trial. Then there's a whole host of other therapeutics, things that are directed at the virus itself, small molecules, antiviral type approaches, as well as some of the secondary complications like the microthrombi and thromboembolic events that we're looking at anticoagulants. There's a lot of action going on. Anything else that you're uh, hopeful about beyond antibodies or just right now, nothing that has gotten? Uh... Well, you know, having been so deeply involved, Ashish, with the combination antiretroviral therapies that were literally like miracle drugs for HIV, I'm hoping that we're doing all these other things, but that we come up with something that as soon as somebody comes in with a positive test, Bingo, you hit them with an antiviral and you're done. That's what I see for the future. Quite frankly, there really is no reason why we cannot do that. There's no reason why that's not possible. Heck, if we did it for HIV, we can do it for coronavirus.